Any others? What are you guys doing for? Like you said, we had two hawks, and we bought this little mini donkey. And I'm telling you, within days, those hawks disappeared. That donkey, the dog, we allow the donkey just to walk around and get out wherever he wants to go. Because he stays around, and within days, these two hawks used to land the same tree every day, and we got our chickens down in the barn, and we didn't allow them to come. As soon as we got that donkey, we started training that donkey to stay around, some of these two hawks disappeared. I, mean, I haven't seen them in probably three weeks now. But that donkey, I see it. She doesn't bother you, just wanders around, but those, those two hawks, I don't want to part of that. I'll uh, chase mine two or three miles at a time, all three days, I'll tell them down. Do you know if that donkey helps at all at night? We have, we have a problem with owls, and so would it help at night too, you think? I, well, we were told by the lady we bought our donkey from, she raised them from the mini donkey, she said that they, once you bring them home, and they get used to the, the animals, that she said that they will protect every animal in, on your farm because they they know that that's that's part of their family. Mm -hmm. now, the only thing we had a problem with was one of our dogs. He decided he wanted to play with the donkey, and of course, you know, the donkey said, you know, you know, I mean, you were going to battle, and my lab got kicked one day because he battled with the donkey, and he lost. Now he doesn't bother the donkey. But that donkey will defend, that donkey will even defend the dog, as she said. She said, actually, if it comes down to it, that donkey will attack. So, you know, once he knows that's his family, the donkeys are unbelievable, and we, we wouldn't send this to the hospital. I've got some of those little sober red lights that come on at night on the outside of my chicken house. And so we've had a lot of problems with foxes, some coyotes, possums. We've been overrun with stumps lately. And that flashing red light, supposedly the other the predators think there's a bigger predator already here. Actually, one of them, um, they work seem to help a lot. Yeah, there's a couple guys that I know are using them. Um, there wasn't enough for all of you. I had some extras, and you could kind of share them. But this is a great resource, and that that red-eyed little machine is in here somewhere. Um, but just FYI, in this section on facilities, this is it's just a great resource, and if you and not getting one of these. Premier One, you go to the website. There's some just some really good. Really, oh, they're awesome. Or call them. Yeah, yeah. Right I'm down the right down the phone number. Was that helpful, Bob? Or? Yeah. Okay. Use an idea. Unfortunately, we never say, "Here's what you do, and it'll fix it." You know, and it's just varies from place to place. We put the netting up, and that's helped some. Um, uh, we actually had the hawk hit the netting and bounce off it, and then hit the netting and bounce off it. It was like it was on the trampoline. And it was like, oh, before it finally got the <laughs> That's great. And then at the netting, when you come out there to a boat, all the way around it, and then a rectangle and a circle, so that you can hear a fine chicken with a fold to the side, they don't want to have it go in. And then, you design it so it's got Good, okay, uh, let's continue filling. So, so let's talk a little bit about feed. Now let me tell you about this whole feed situation, right? Uh, we're at a point uh, for the Carolina and Harris Poultry Coalition, as well as nationally, we don't tell a, feed, a farmer what he feeds. It's, it's in his court or in her court or in their court, okay? And so in North Carolina, we have farmers that are doing certified organic feed. We have farmers that are mixing their own feed. We have farmers that are feeding Purina. We have farmers who are feeding Bartlett. Um, you know, they have their own recipes. Um, there's farmers that are doing no soy and no non-GMO, okay? Just kind of across the board varies from place to place, farm to farm. So forth and so on. And so, um, and whatever your preference is, you got to kind of wrestle through that as far as you might say, well, I'm going after the, the marketing niche of, of organic uh, or non GMO or no soy. If you are not familiar with uh, the Weston Price Foundation, I would encourage you to take a look at their website, learn a little bit about the Weston Price Foundation. Basically, what Weston Price did, I forget back in the 30s or the 40s, and if some, anybody connected to Western Price at all? Okay, um, so I'm, because I thought maybe you know more better than I do. But basically, Western Price studied different cultures and people groups around the world and took an uh, inventory of what they ate and how it affected their growth, and how it affected their dental, their teeth, their bone structure, and so forth and so on. 
And, um, and, the, and the, the Western Price movement basically says the going back and eating some of the old foods, you know, obviously non-GMO uh, kinds of things, as well as the, um, uh, he discovered that the, the processed soy, I think, is it, is the old soy okay? And some of the health issues, or are you? Yeah, yeah. So, and, and to be honest with you, I'm a live production kind of expert. I'm on this whole learning curve on the culinary side and spending time with chefs and learning from nutritionists and what's going on. Oh, I did, I forgot. There is this brochure on your table about the Weston Price Foundation and just some things about soy. So, um, I think there's plenty of those, and I have some extras. Um, Oh, really? Yeah, let's see. So, um, so that's feed, but let me give you a couple things to think about. Feed, begin by asking, what would chickens and turkeys eat if they were on their own in the wild? Three food groups there, right in the blanks. Three food groups, green plants, seeds and fruits, and animal foods, like insects, worms, slugs, snails, and even small rodents. You guys ever seen a flock of chickens get a hold of a mouse? <laughs> <laughs> we actually put out a bait bag of feed that went moldy, and we can capture the mice in the bag, and we give the mice to the chickens. Yeah. And then it was awful, but they love it. Oh, it's that, the that's great. It's, well, I mean, <laughs> it is. I mean, the best thing in chicken. Or rugby. Right. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Right. Little kid soccer game. Oh. And I love, uh, actually, the, I love, uh, Harvey Ustery, this is a book, I'm actually, uh, he, I can't remember if he mentioned it in a workshop, he says, what do these three have in common? They are alive and they're raw. Bottom of the page there, they're alive and they're raw. And uh, now, so you can be thinking about that with feet. Turn the page, just if you decide you're going to do your own nutrients for poultry, uh, I just listed these as, as their Chief function. I'm not going to spend too much on time and on this. I'll let you do some of your own homework on the feed. Uh, so number one is water, digestion, carrier of foods and waste products. Uh, uh, number two, carbohydrates for heat, energy, fat production. And I try to give you just some ideas here. Primarily is cereal grains, corn, wheat, oats, barley, and rye. Number three, they need fats um, for reserve supply of heat and energy. Number four, proteins. That's kind of self-explanatory, but you know there's some suggestions there. Milk, meat scraps, uh, fish meal, soybean meal, cottonseed meal, linseed meal. Number five, minerals for their skeletal formation, egg production, and regulation of uh, body neutra neutrality. Bone meal, limestone, oyster shell, salt, kelp. We used to feed that with turkeys. Um, Number six, vitamin A for growth. For vitamins, you can you got green grass, alfalfa, alfalfa meal, silage, fish oils, uh, liver meal, and yeast. Uh, number seven, the B1 for appetite, digestion, health of nerve, and prevention. Uh, probably the new. I can't remember if I say that. Letter uh, number eight, vitamin D. Mineral uh, simulation, number nine, vitamin E, got health of the reproductive organs, fertility and hatchability. I want to make a note of that. You know, make sure if you're in the breeding side, make sure they have plenty of uh, vitamin E. Uh, vitamin E, E is an echo, sorry about that. So those are just, I wanted to kind of just give you that list. So thoughts and reminders, start the page. Remember, uh, free ranging is absolutely best for all poultry. The less we do for them, the more they do for themselves. Think about that. Okay? You will confirm if your birds are getting enough to eat by fe feeling their crops. So a lot of times people are like, hey, am I feeding my chickens enough? Are they getting enough to eat? Okay? Pick them up. Feel their crops after they have gone to roost. If their crops are full, they're getting plenty of food. Okay? You got empty crops every night, you might have too many birds in too small of a space, they're not giving enough feed. Okay? You also remember this. 
Okay, it's true with Aaron's turkeys, true with Aaron's chickens. Okay, corn is cross. Well, Steve, how, when do they stop eating? They never stop eating. They never stop eating. That's no, they don't eat at night. Yeah, well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, a Delaware, a Buckeye, a, a, an Oscar, they eat and go, my body's telling me to stop. And then they stop eating. So, you know, we say there's nothing wrong with 24-7 availability of feed for heritage or and heritage turkeys and or chickens. On an industrialized, even our turkeys, uh, but chickens as well, they'll eat, 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 eat. And part of the way you stretch out that growth of those industrial birds is don't let them eat as much. Okay, so, um, so you have to make the decision there. Will you feed, purchase feed, or produce your own? <clears throat> Rb Ostry says this in his a section on feed. Why should artificially highly processed feeds be any better for chickens than artificially high processed foods are for us? Ooh. Good question, huh? So remember, feed age appropriate feed. And um, I recommend, I like the crumble, I think it's a little bit more natural for the bird. Some of you would say, you know, let's go with a pellet, uh, and that's strictly my opinion. That's not Jim Atkins' Bible, that's just, crumble is just my recommendation. Now, I, I did put there, chickens, day-old chicks need a minimum of 20% protein. Laying hens need a minimum of 15% protein. Adult breeding chickens, a minimum of about 20% protein. Uh, turkeys, dale, now I want you to scroll out what I want you to see is the difference of dale poults, 24% protein, growing turkeys a minimum of 22%, adult breeding turkeys a minimum of 24% in protein, okay? Phone call after phone call after phone call after phone call of farmers losing turkeys and I say, what are you feeding turkeys? And they say, chick started. Huge mistake. Birds not getting the nutrients and the protein it needs. Is that because of the bigger size? Yeah, just the way they're a bigger size, and just that's a good question. It's just the way they're. Yeah, why, why don't you explain a little bit of what you discovered when you were breeding, um, or what when you're when you start hatching, what feed changes do you make, Jennifer? I started at minimum a month before breeding. Before I start collecting eggs, I put my breeding stock on a twenty-four percent. Um, super breeder. We get it from southern states. Around here, that's the best place that's the best quality I've found thus far. Um, and I have a 95% half rate. And I don't live in Cat. Have you lost any chicks? No. Well, she got 96 birds. No, she got like something like that. We lost the one when I got there. She didn't lose any of them. They're now four months old. They're just the strongest birds I've ever had in my life. The big thing I learned from this thing is never ever put that a chick get anything but feather lower because the calcium content of any other feed will ruin their livers. Because it's too high. Too much calcium in standard feeds. A lot of people make that and say, well, I'll just get regular feed and crunch up small for chicks. And that was a big one that I learned. I didn't never had to have that some people did, but I don't know why. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I don't want to dwell too long on food, but I did have a quick question, which is this issue of whether or not there should be chicken and chicken butt products, including feathering or chicken feed. Anybody else have a problem? It's kind of a personal choice. But I just wanted to
I would err on the side of caution and just say no critter products of the same critter in the feed at all. I mean, our dilemma is that we can either do an all soy and grain based feed, mm -hmm. or we can do an all animal feed. And of course, they don't clarify if it's pork, or it might also be chicken sometimes. So that, I was just curious if anyone. Well, you can do you can do a fish meal for protein soy. Oh, this is just if we get it at, at our at our our option is basically southern states. Uh, Unless we just start doing special ordering of, of other products. But, so that's we only have two options with them. So I just want to know if anyone has any thoughts on it. Well I'll tell you, write down if you're interested, okay, you're gonna pay for this, but read for R E E D Y. Yeah. They're they're actually um, we're growing our turkeys here on a on a a no soy, non GMO certified organic feed. And I'll tell you why I'm growing my turkeys here on that. It's because I think one of the one of our best marketing guys in the Piedmont is East of Eden Farms, John Bosick. He's he's growing buckeyes for me. He'll grow out a few thousand this year. He's doing a no he's doing the exact same feed. Well, he's only got hundred turkeys. And he has that market for that no soy non-GMO kind of certified organic feed. He, he tapped into that market. So I'm feeding that primarily because when he runs out of turkeys, I have the exact same turkeys, the exact same age, getting the exact same feed. He can go, hey Jim, I need, I could use 50 more turkeys or 100 more turkeys or whatever. But they're, they're, he's now, George Teague is now blending our own, we gave him the recipe. And he's, he's, he's blending, doing our recipe. And uh, like, you know, it comes here in one ton of tote bags. And the protein source is fish meal. It's fish meal. Okay. And it's, you'll see our turkeys. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're what yeah. about the cost? Is it cost effective? Um, or you don't know? I'll, oh, I know. I know. I'll hit on that in marketing. I'll give you some numbers. Because yeah. it's definitely, that's a great question to ask you about. Well, on that, I, I don't have a, I don't blank this on I recommend blank to everything? Crumble, Crumble. instead of pellet. It's just my opinion. Now under recommended books for feeding recipes, I would write down, it's an oldie goldie, it's not in my top 10 list, it's called Feeds and Feeding. And I cannot remember who the author is of that book, but um, if you, you know, Google it and try and find it, that's a very, very good book, and I apologize that I don't have the author's name. Now, what about, I didn't put anything under foraging because every, you know, what you use for forage in South Carolina can be different than what we use in North Carolina. What we use in North Carolina might be different than Northern Virginia. So let's just kind of, those of you who are into the whole grass and foraging, I don't know, I'm sure Bob, you might, I don't know what you're doing there, or, or anybody want to talk a little bit about forage. Yeah. We actually went, attended another um, workshop that was uh, put on for our coffee and agents. Um, last year, and he talked about the foraging aspect, and what was interesting, and this was, I can't remember his name, but anyway, he just got a lot of this, um, but he, uh, he actually said that Dan, Dan Pompo. Yeah. Um, he actually was talking about chickens, one, it was interesting, the chickens get stupid after about 16, 18 minutes, they are loaded by them and are going on, like roosting, and and, and in the foraging aspect, if you can get them to foraging, the sooner you can get them foraging as chicks, the, the better they're going to feed themselves the rest of their lives. But um, was that the more they forage, the more calories they're going to burn. You still, actually, he said, said you still are need to feed them um, as much as you would a chicken that was in a cage because they're they're going to burn some of those calories foraging. But um, we're finding that you know they're they're foraging, they're they, they're, they're their waste is greener now that they're foraging more. Um, it, that from our, because we're pushing them out of the coop, trying to get them to stop huddling the coop so much. Um, and so it does seem like, like you said, the less we do for them, the more they, they do for themselves, which is kind of contrary to what we were told at that point um, in some ways. But um, but he also did say that freshly mowed, if you keep it mowed, they, they're going to eat the, the new growth more readily than they will old grass, if it's, if it's grass that's been, been allowed to grow and then just fall over, um, that's going to be not as good for them as all the new growth, so you need to mow it. They follow me, I, 
But I have about 15 and I'm telling you, I get on my tractor start mowing oh, grass on right. a lot of tractors. They, I mean, it's mm -hmm. like, it's like I got something there just one. They, they the follow bugs. right behind me the and they just pick up that grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was the bugs, exactly. I thought yeah. it was yeah. yeah. But, but I mean, I get that lawnmower out there, I figure they kind of shy away. They see me get on that lawnmower, they come running. They start crawling, they come running. Yeah. 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 I'll go back there and then up here to Jennifer. Bill Mollison, who's the father of the permaculture, recommends planting a lot of mulberry trees. This year I spent a lot of time on pastures. I just want my birds on green grass all the time. So I did one area in Protect 31, I did one in Tall Fescue, and I left one in the orchard to just where the weeds popped up in my area. My county extension officer said, you can plant whatever you want in your pasture, but in two years, fescue will take over. Because that's what grows here, is fescue. And everybody has it or doesn't have it, that's what grows here. But I did discover that mowing is one of the most important things you can do. And I did it because I had too much grass and I really couldn't use it well. I thought this is out of hand. Then I realized that the manure falls through when it's shorter, when it's about at the very most six inches. The manure falls through. They get more interested in getting in and under and finding bugs in there because it's not laying over the flat. And it keeps the grass coming back greener. Yeah. It keeps yeah. the grass healthier. The grass roots get stronger, so it's a win win in the area. So I'm going to keep it mud. Right. Do you keep it mud at six inches? Somewhere in about that zone. The highest setting on my my lawn tractor, if I go to individual uh, paddocks, it's lower. It's green and it's all green. And they, they do find little spots that they can dust in, but they're not as much interested in dusting as they used to be either. We used to make paddocks devoid of any green stuff. But somehow we've gotten it into the winter routine. Uh, Captain Rice growing, keep moving them out until it can get strong. And it's wonderful to clean your birds and get all that. I keep on real short so they can find the crickets and stuff. You know, I use them up on the sleeve and the patch. Well, they grow a little higher. It's, and it'll keep, it'll keep it wetter because you know, the ground is wet from the sun. Not so high that the root base can't keep going on the grass. Just try it up a bit. We planted a lot of corn. And we'll go out and we'll take a slice and we'll 
you know, cut huge piles of just whatever's you know interesting. They love pigweed, and so sadly we let pigweed go to see, not go to seed, but get you know nice big flower heads on it because the chickens love it. They really dig it, and so it's something that we give them as a treat, but it's free and it's not really you know having to seed anything or having to go out and return a pasture mix. But the, the produce segments have been wonderful. I mean, they they totally love it. So what about in the winter? Um, I was just looking through that book and it had a picture of a tray with green sprouts. Would you do that for your chickens? Grow some sprouts? I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Absolutely. <coughs> there was a, uh, a farm in the Midwest that was sprouting green sprouts for the chickens. And some of their chickens as well. They were going to start with them. Okay. Just the uh, sprouting plastic. How are they serving it to the chickens? Are they flats or is it Any other questions on or thoughts on foraging? What kind of grass? What's growing on here? Is it fescue? Or fescue, do you know? Bluegrass. Um, uh, white and red clover. What have you noticed our turkeys eat as far as forage? Everything? Yeah, everything really likes clover. Um, and there's a couple grasses. I think. Uh, bluegrass out there that they really get into. Yeah, um, yeah pretty much, I'm sorry I missed it, but you know, for me it's, it's less sad more kind of what they don't need, and just so long as that stuff isn't thoroughly taken over. Right. Yeah. And any that you saw, you noticed that they don't eat? No, grasses really, and Depending on your the size of your paddock, how often you're moving it, this applies for any animals. It's kind of a stock density kind of thing. They they trample a lot too. So what they don't eat, the microbes will. What they don't eat, you're laying down as as mulch and forage, or as, as mulch and building building the soil. And assuming you're moving. So anything dangerous, poisonous, as far as forage goes. I, you know, to, to be perfectly honest, I'm sure there are. I've, I've always been told, that's not entirely true, I have been told that um, animals are intelligent enough not to eat things that is poisonous. Plus they can find. If you leave them there long enough and they're starving and they eat something poisonous, that's kind of more your fault than you. Right. Matt, you got, what was your little, you had that plastic covering something. I threw that down in a very little bit of And then you have, um, the tarp was covering some berries or something. Oh, what? blueberries. Well, they so went the birds didn't get them. And you now the chickens are under them. Whenever they hear a hawk, they go under the blueberry. Oh, okay. So it wasn't for the, to eat what's in there. No, 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 it was. Okay. It was to keep the birds Protection. our berries. <laughs> Protection. All right. Yeah, that's more, more, more uses now. Yeah.